Hi, I'm Cape Shiratoad and this is the second video on Guild Wars 2 PvP Fundamentals. The question that we have today is to say, how do I actually join a game? Uh, I'm in the mist, I want to get my feet wet, how do I do that? Well, uh, to start playing, uh, you click on the Play PvP and it brings up the PvP Home screen. There's a couple of tabs here, um, but if you just want to hop into a game and just start playing and seeing what it's about, um, clicking on the practice button will do that for you. Um, what this does is that there are a number of servers who, that have current running games. And if you go to the server browser, you can actually see uh, various servers with actual running games, how many people are on them, what is the map, uh, what is the allotted sizes per teams, uh, and the play now section contains various sizes of games uh, some of them are team sizes of 10 some of them are team sizes of 8 some of them are team sizes of 5 uh, and it's generally a more relaxed environment um, so when you quite new and you don't know the maps this is where you want to go and it's quite important to actually get to know the map so uh, I strongly recommend that until you're at least um, a bear, uh, play on on practiced and play on unranked. And the reason for that is just to get map experience, get an idea of how people move, get an idea of how the map works, what you need to do, get um, the fundamentals right like capturing a point keeping a point reviving your enemy uh, your teammates uh, finishing your enemies all those kind of things um, the arenas for unranked and ranked are more competitive than play now this is a five man size teams and because it's so small you can't hide behind teammates anymore so you really actually want to already know what you're doing the um, environment within the the unranked is still fine but within the ranked arenas it, it becomes quite competitive um, the the goal behind the the unranked arenas though is that if you're an individual and you just want to join a team of other individuals against another team who also only exists out of individuals then this is where you can play. There's no advantage of people belonging to parties and being on TeamSpeak or you know, under the form of communication software uh, strategizing against you. When you go into the ranked arenas though, this is where people that are in parties actually compete. So it's a much more aggressive uh, environment where competition is concerned and um, the skill level is, is generally considered to be uh, quite a bit higher. Um, these are people that know what to do, they play in their teams regularly, they are coordinated. Now, you can join this, uh, even if you don't have a full team, you can uh, be anywhere from one to five people. Um, so you can still pug this. But uh, you'll have a difficult time against uh, a team that are five people that are coordinated and, and are in a, in a party. When you join a practice match, uh, you'll be faced with this introduction screen. Uh, it basically has three options to spectate, choose a side or to join a random side. If you choose spectate, you won't actually be playing, you'll just be watching how other people play. Um, when uh, you click either red or blue you will join the red or the blue team respectively if the red option is disabled it means that there are too many red players already and you have to join the blue team if the blue is disabled there are too many blue players and you have to join the red team um, if both are op open and you don't really care you can just click join random especially if the game just starts and it'll just assign you to a random color so I'm just going to go random for now. Um, you always start the game in an initial staging area where you also respawn. Um, there's normally about a minute that you can use to change your build. If you press the B key, it'll show you 
uh, all the players that are on the map, uh, what type of class they are. So if you need to make final tweaks to sort of counter a specific class that you might think you'll be running against, um, you have time to do that and you can just go to your PvP builds and make whatever changes you need to make. When you feel that you're ready, uh, click the change status button so that you are ready and then you can see I've got a tick mark behind my name now that says I'm ready and even if the time hasn't come to its completion yet but everybody's ready the game will start. Um, Alright so what is the PvP matches about? Uh, PvP is about taking and capturing uh, points. You'll see there is a point A, a point B and a point C. I'm on the red team, you can see on the minimap, this is my current location and you'll always have uh, a base closest to your spawn point, somewhere in the middle and then one f that's closest to your enemy spawn point. So a lot of people try and capture three points and keep three points and that's just silly because you don't need to do that. Um, the reason why you capture these points is that for every point that you've captured um, you start accumulating uh, score um, and so your score points are determined by two things uh, the points that you are holding and also kills that you get so when you kill enemies you get points for that when you take and hold uh, capture points you'll get score for that as well um, so you only need two points and the reason why you only need two points is because you'll be accumulating more score than the enemy if they are just holding one point you can't hold a single point and just depend on kills to make up the difference it, it doesn't work but the problem with trying to keep three points is, is that you can't defend three points effectively um, so uh, it's best to to capture points get two of them and hold them now to capture a point uh, i can demonstrate it here but it's not actually going to work because the game hasn't started but you'll see that there is a, a big white circle and uh, some points the circle are bigger than other circles but when i stand within the circle i'll start capturing this point for my team now if the other team already has this point so if this was blue when I got here, then I would first have to neutralize it and then switch it over to red. Um, and you'll actually see the progression of the circle turn red and show you that you have captured it or not. Um, when we actually look at uh, a live game, uh, then that'll become a little bit clearer. But the important thing to notice is that as soon as I move off of the point, um, an enemy can go stand on that point even if I'm in the vicinity and neutralize it. Uh, so I want to be on the actual point when there's a battle going on because as soon as none of my team is within the point it'll start going over to the enemy if they have players on the point. Um, so the very basic rules that you have to have to have to follow within pvp is to capture and keep points to fight on top of the points don't get involved in like a fight over here for argument's sake uh, it, it bears no fruit um, the objective is to get to the point capture the point keep the point um, if you're intercepting an enemy to prevent them from getting to a point, that's a different story. So if I'm here at Bravo and I see the enemy who's going to spawn in this area here is coming down this rampage, I might choose to engage them here to actually block them off, push them off the sides, uh, make their life difficult to get to the Bravo point. So that's acceptable. But as soon as the battle occurs near the point, I need to go and stand on top of the point just to make sure that it doesn't actually get turned around. Um, the second important thing to note is, is that you have to revive your friends. Now I'll probably create a video at some stage looking at the intricacies uh, behind that because there's um, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, quick examples of that would be uh, 
to prevent people from finishing your frames so that you can revive them uh, to prevent enemies from reviving their friends um, and also you know don't die while being revived it's, it's something that happens unfortunately a bit to me and then I always think how stupid um, you want to revive your friend without becoming a victim but that also becomes a strategy sometimes to kill someone not finish them and uh, bring their friends in so you can kill them as well but uh, we'll have to wait for another video to go in those details so the important thing here is to to capture and keep the points uh, two points don't stretch yourself too thin revive your friends and finish your enemies uh, so let's actually look at a live game and then we can see some of those dynamics in play okay so uh, this is a ranked match I'm playing currently with my Power Ranger uh, and I just want to use this as an example of uh, a PvP game now there are three points on this map as every other map uh, and our objective is to capture and keep it now I push the ranger off because I want to maintain the high ground uh, if I can maintain this piece of territory then it's to my advantage uh, and that ranger is probably a power ranger so I want to pick on them uh, kill them off quickly because they're the biggest risk to my team and you can see that uh, We've got a teammate on the point fighting with an enemy, uh, which is good because that prevents them from actually capturing the point. Um, so this is generally how it goes. Uh, you'll have a contest around a point. Uh, the person who successfully stays on the point will actually get it. And even though the battle might sometimes go slightly off point, um, somebody always tries to get back on point to uh, maintain it. So now we've got a thief in the mix as well, uh, but there's more than enough of uh, our players here to actually deal with the thief. So uh, even though the thief has gone invisible, uh, I know that uh, I took him down because just the, the sheer damage that I do. Um, so I just put a barrage there to finish him off. Now on this particular map, uh, there are certain buffs that actually help your team along. Um, and uh, controlling the high ground is actually very good because uh, this maneuver where I can look over our close point and midpoint uh, really helps. So I made a bit of a mistake here thinking that there might be more of a skirmish going on at our home base. Uh, but there wasn't really. Um, and looking at the top section we can see that uh, the middle point is under contest again so just moving back there very quickly to try and support that team again um, this uh, thief is actually trying to to try and kill me uh, my invulnerability is on cooldown so it's going to be a bit of a tough battle for me uh, I pop down the health just to sort of get a bit of regeneration going and I go invisible just to confuse him as to where I am, waiting for my teammate to come up behind me. Uh, 2v1s is always uh, preferable. Uh, you know, fighting alone, it might be cool, but it's just stupid. You, you really want to play with your team. It's a team-based game. Um, and together we finish the thief, no problem. We can see at the bottom that the enemy is trying to revive one of their friends and successfully did so. Um, and if uncontested they'll actually keep the point so we really want to push them off of it quickly um, and my strategy here is, is just to stand at the top and do a ton of damage uh, killing anybody who's trying to do revives trying to do the pushbacks um, and we've successfully killed all the enemies on the point so our team is now going to take that point over uh, and you'll actually see that the, the circle at the top center will go from white to red. Now, I'm using the high ground to sort of peek between two points and one of the buffs. And uh, stillness is now available. Stillness is quite crucial because you get uh, double the points for the capture points that you have so you really want to have stillness and, and normally there's a major battle that ensues here 
but because I'm not really built to actually stand in the mix of things, uh, I just sort of prevent them from capturing it. So you'll see that the person there tried to take stillness, but I shot him. So whenever you're trying to take a buff and somebody actually hits you uh, with any type of attack, you'll stop capturing that buff. Um, so that's all I'm trying to do here is just to prevent them from taking the buff and maybe killing one or two if I can get lucky. Uh, I always try and attack the pets as well uh, because they can be a real menace uh, and just in case that guy is going to try and take the point or the, the buff I'm just uh, putting a barrage on. Hopping down having a peep seeing that nobody's really there I'm going to capture it for our team uh, and this is going to help us significantly on the points even though we have two points this will really kick our, our, our score into gear. Um, realizing that I'm fighting off point here though, I decide to actually just uh, back off and uh, get back to my uh, my team. I have a peep down there, see that that's not under a fight, so I can, can actually take the time to go to the high ground. So our team is actually doing quite good. Uh, quite well uh, standing uh, on the point preventing other people from neutralizing it they they're tanking well uh, but they're taking a bit of pressure from the ranger at the far side so I'm just want to do my own little bit to try and put pressure on the ranger but without exposing myself too much so you can see the ranger is now very uncomfortable he's got two people on him um, and that sorts him out very quickly Got the thief back. Uh, he's trying his best to uh, being an annoyance. Quickly pop some health off, and then uh, I just go into the battle, gets me away from the thief and close to my allies. For in case I do go down, uh, I'll be close to where they can actually revive me. Uh, going invisible, moving around the terrain, totally confuses the thief. He doesn't know what's going on, uh, and uh, that helps me. Now you can actually see that our teammate is there trying to. Uh, do a bit of a revive but um, it's GG and um, I think everybody played really well